All right, guys, welcome to part zero of the Traxxas Summit upgrade series. I'm calling it part zero because these aren't, they are upgrades, but they're the most basic things. And as far as I'm concerned, they should have been done at the factory. First thing is, as you can see, they have double orange springs up here at the front. And you can't really see it here, but I put, oh, maybe you can see it. Put double orange springs in the back. Lots of people complain it sags under acceleration because it comes stock with double yellow, I believe. So if you put double orange springs in the back, it'll be a lot a lot better in, for, in terms of sagging in the rear. And it won't really sacrifice any off-road ability or anything like that. So if you're really desperate and you're waiting for parts in the mail, you could swap your double orange springs from the front, put them in the back, put your double yellow springs in the front because it sags to the rear when it accelerates, but I think the best thing to do is just put double orange all the way around. The second thing I've done is I actually have a T-Max brake disc in in, uh, on my slipper, which replaces the three little pads it comes with. Lots of times, I, I don't know if I just can't adjust them right or whatever, but I get slipping a lot, so you get stuck on rocks and any or something like that and if you're trying to drive you'll just slip and once it slips the little pads can get glazed and then they don't grip very well so I don't know if it's just me or what I bought both these summits used but I've always had trouble with the little slipper clutch pads or whatever so on both of these summits I put a T-Max brake disc which gives you a lot more surface area so you can grip a lot better if you guys have brushless motors or something you'd probably see probably be even more happy with this I'll put a link in the description, but I think it's like four bucks or something. Super cheap. And it gives you a lot more surface area to grip, so you shouldn't really have any slipping problems after this. You'll just have to make sure you don't tighten it too tight or you can bend these metal plates. And if you put it too tight and you're ripping really good, you can damage things, but that's what a slipper's for. So, so yeah, the T-Max brake disc, the double orange springs in the rear, and then up next I'll show you how to waterproof your bearings. I like driving both my trucks in water all the time, so I try and waterproof the bearings or at least make them more resistant to water so they don't rust out all the time, so I'll show that next. Alright, so I'm going to be waterproofing this little bearing. Waterproofing is something I do to all my bearings in both my summits right off the bat because I like to drive in water, I think it's fun, and I usually just let the mare dry after and hope for the best, and it's actually worked out pretty good, so that's something else you'll see in this upgrade series, everything everything will be waterproof, or it will get waterproofed, which I'll do a video on as well, and yeah, cheap and waterproof are pretty much my only two requirements, so, so first things first, you get your bearing, you have to take it apart well you have to get the bearing out of your truck by yourself but I'm gonna take a little uh, knife thing here I think I got this one from the dollar store but go on the inside just kind of slide it along hook it under pull off the seal do it on both sides you don't really want to you don't want to be too rough because you can bend these because they are actually if you can see, they're metal coated in rubber. I don't know if that'll focus, but whatever. So this is an aftermarket, uh, I think, Acer or Avid bearing, but the Traxxas ones are pretty much the same. These have a little bit of grease in them, not really that much. Traxxas ones, not much better. So what you do, I, get, I got this little syringe. I'll put a link in the description. Filled it up with marine grease or waterproof grease anything like that the thicker the better if it says waterproof even better it's got this little tiny hook curve tip which can be tricky because it's so small that it's pretty hard to get the grease out but just gotta give it a push and it starts coming out on its own so you just want to get it in the grooves Fill it up, pack the bearing full of waterproof grease. Just 
slowly just kind of feeds out on its own once you start pushing the back plunger in. I just kind of glob it all in. You want to make sure it gets in the inner part to the ball bearings. Then once it's semi full, it doesn't need to be right full because once you put the covers or whatever back on, I just line them up like this. And then once you put them on, it squishes them all, squishes all the grease in there and then some comes out obviously. So now they should be full of grease. You can give it a little spin. It turns a bit harder, but I think that's fine. You're not really going to notice much of a performance decrease. And you just get some paper towel and you wipe off the outside because you want the grease in the bearing, but you don't really want it ever else. Otherwise, it'll collect dirt and then it can get in there and everything. And Our goal here is to be not replacing bearings very often, so you get greasy dirt up everywhere that's not really helping the cause so you just want to get all the excess grease off that's pretty much it this bearings ready to go back in and then you just do that for every bearing and your trucks waterproof all right so that does it for part zero of the upgrade series Part one, we'll start with the actual real upgrades. And I think we'll start with the single servo upgrade. Way stronger. So stay tuned for that.